So it's been about hour and a half, hour, hour and a half since we got done pouring. And the part in the sun over there is gonna be drying before the part in the shade. So we're just going down to check it. When we when we power trowel concrete, it's all about timing. And we wanna be able to just walk on the concrete and maybe only sink in about an eighth of an inch, no more than an eighth of an inch. And uh, that tells us it's ready to start power troweling. If we're sinking in a little more than an eighth of an inch, and we usually give it a little more time and it's dependent on you know it's dependent on the temperature outside today is about 50 55 degrees it depends on if it's in the sun if it's in the shade it, it depends on if there's plastic under the floor like this one it had a plastic vapor barrier uh, there's just there's there's quite a few things that come into play when you're deciding when to first stop putting that power trial down on the floor so Right now, Darren's just magging his edges out. We always mag the edges first to fill in any little voids, make sure they're good and flat. And then uh, we'll dump, we'll drop the power trial down in there. So he'll mag out whatever's ready to mag out. I'm, I'm guessing he gets over in that shade, he's gonna stop. And uh, we'll show you when we put the power trial down on. So we're backing our truck up. Our truck has that crane on it there on the right. That's how we drop power trials down into an eight foot foundation like this. We use that crane, we use it all the time. If, uh, if any of you floor guys don't have a crane like that, I'd highly recommend it. I'll have a link for one down in the description so you can check it out. Uh, we put that winch up there. It comes with like a boat crank, but it's much better with the winch. And then we just wire it into the battery. So we're gonna drop that 30 inch power trial down there now we'll we'll hit it first with that we may drop another one down there or we may not we use finish blades you can see those are just metal finish blades and then for finishing and then we use these what we call float blades for the first hit for the we call that floating so we'll float it first then we'll kick those off and then we'll hit it with the finish blades, probably sometimes four or five times with those finish blades. The reason we use flow blades is it's just easier to get out any rough spots on the floor like those bull float lines and it helps flatten the floor out a little better than just using finish blades or combo blades so the float blades are kind of like kind of like magging the edge first but it's doing it with the floor so it'll get out those float those full float lines it'll fill in any rock holes it'll take out any little tiny humps or dips and it really flattens out the floor really good How easy that is to set that down in there. It's just as easy to take it out after. We went years and years with setting them down in there by hand. And I finally spotted up and got one of those cranes. Hey guys, Mike here. So what Darren's going to do is he's going to start the trial and he's going to work his way out of that shady area where it's a little softer over to where the sun's been kind of hitting the floor a lot longer where it's a little harder and where we already did his edges. So first thing he's going to do is 
take out most of his footprints from doing the edges. You don't want them sitting in the sun too long. Otherwise, they'll be really hard to get out. But it looks like he's got on this just about at the right time. He's not really too early. He's not too late. It's just right. So it's working up nice and easy for him. So the first pass is down that edge, taking his footprints out. And then he drops the machine down about the width of the machine. That's a 30-inch power trial. And then he comes back over it. So what he's doing now, the reason he's stopping and hitting that with a steel trial is because that edge has been in the sun for quite a while. And it's, and it's actually pretty dry. It's drier than it looks. So he's just hitting it with a trial, getting it nice and smooth. And then uh, we don't have to hit it again until we use the lay down blades. Now Luke's, Luke's getting on there with the knee boards and he's going to go around and hit that pot that's been in the shade so long because it's just not dry enough yet to hit it with a power trial. So he'll get that shade pot all magged out, which is really a big bonus. I mean, if you don't have to hit that with a power trial, it's going to dry a little bit better if you just do it by hand. And then eventually it'll be dry enough to hit it with a power trial. So as you can see, Darren's starting to float with that first truck. We poured that first truck. And his finish pattern is always to the left. And then he drops down, like I said, the width of that power trowel to the bottom of that finish pattern. And then he comes back over the middle of both of those. You can see we have kind of a system we use. We, we finish to the left, drop down, go to the right, push it back up and go down the middle of both of those. You can see right there. And what that does is it helps keep the floor nice and flat. You just can't randomly run the power trowel all over the floor and expect to have a nice flat floor. You have to have a system. And this is the system we've been using for years and years and years. This is how I was taught. Whether you have a 30 inch trowel or a 36 inch trowel or a 46 inch trowel, it's always the same. And you can see he's, now he's getting onto that second truck. That second truck wasn't drying quite as fast as the first, so we didn't have to hit the whole floor in one pattern. And you can see those float blades, they really fill in a lot, and it, it makes it fast. They take your footprints out really fast. If you use combo blades, they don't quite take your footprints out quite as good as these float blades do. They may get the floor a little bit smoother on that first hit, but it, it's a little more work. We would just, this is the way we were brought up, guys. You know, we, we've always used float blades, and then we kick them off and we use the finish blades, and I think you'll see why here in a, in a minute. But Darren's just working his way back towards that ladder. You can see he left that back piece where the shade had been most, most of the morning. And now he's working his way back to it. Could probably just a little few minutes early right there, but it's it is in the sun. You can see it's in the sun, so better to be a few minutes early than a few minutes late. So he's gonna go ahead and just float that out. That machine's pretty easy to run. I mean, to make it go to the right, you gotta push down on the handles a little bit. And then to go to the left, you lift up on the handles. It takes a little bit to get used to at first. Kind of you're fighting it at first, but once you get used to it, it it's really easy to run. You could run it with just one hand, really. So what we're going to do, we actually poured, this house has a garage with it. We poured that garage today also. So rather than, rather than kick those float blades off and put them on another machine, we're just going to lift that one out, put it on the garage. And then we'll put a finish blade machine down here on this house floor that's a little bit bigger than this 30 inch trowel. That's why having that crane makes it so nice. Just in and out, real easy. So we're going to drop this thing down. This thing has a little bit bigger motor. It's a little heavier. You can see it just has the finish blades on it now.
That crane would drop a 46 inch trowel down there pretty easy too. So now here I am down there. I'm laying this down. We call the first hit float and then we call the rest of them lay down. So I'm, I'm hitting it on first lay down now. And that edge, the sun's beating on that wall. So that edge is actually really dry. A few more minutes on it and I would have been late. I would have had to sprinkle a little water on it to work up the cream. But I got on it just in time. But I'm going to work in that sun pot to get it down. And what you're looking for is you're just looking for those finish blades to fill in all the roughness of the of the previous pattern. And as you can see, once I get going here, I'm going to cross and go 90 degrees from the from the first time we floated it. I'm not going to go in the same pattern every hit. If you did that, you'd have a real wavy floor. So you cross your patterns and that helps flatten the floor out even more. You can see I'm just I'm working that around. I'm crossing the pattern, but I'm working it around a little bit to make sure all my holes are filled. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. I don't want to leave any little rock holes. I don't want to leave any footprints. Now I'm just going up on that edge because like I said, that edge was really drying. You can see it's starting to darken up a little bit. That means it's it's really smooth and it's almost done when it darkens up. You can see that hand trowel I use. I like the one with the square edged on the back of it and the rounded edge on the front. It's just my preference. My guys like the ones with both square edges on the top and the bottom. So as you can see, I'm not hitting all the way across the floor. I'm just hitting that one section because that's the section that's that's hardest. I don't have to hit that other section yet. That's still plenty soft. I got plenty of time on that. So you just want to make sure you get what's hardest. You know, however, however you have to go, you want to hit what's hardest and then work your way to the stuff that's softer. That's how you stay ahead of these floors. I scraped up a little cream and filled in a rock hole right there. Now I'm going to work my way back as far as I have to. And then I'm going to come down and hit that, that one part you see there on the left that's still a little bit rough. There I am just working my way back in a little pattern. Hitting, I'm hitting everything that's in the sun. There's still like three or four feet of that floor that it's in the shade that you can't see yet. I'm not going over that. We'll probably hit that again by hand before we hit it with a power trowel. If we keep hitting the soft spot in the shade with a power trowel, we're just going to be there a lot longer. You can see Darren jumped down there and now he's troweling out my edge for me. I'm finishing up over there on that, that one little section over to the right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right behind him and take his footprints out since that's right in the sun. You can see Luke jump down there. He's troweling out the pot in the shade. Just about every time you hit the floor with a power trial, whether it's float or lay down, you want to go back and hit your edges too. That way you got nice, smooth, flat edges. And you can see I'm coming right behind him, taking his footprints out before the sun bakes them in there and I can't get them out. See, I'm crossing my pattern again. This time I, I'm hitting it. It's a little bit easier than that the first time because the floor is a lot smoother by now. You can see a little bit of it's turned black right up there against the wall. That means that's pretty much done. That's, that's as smooth as glass. This thing's all almost all in the sun now, so it's really drying fast. It's probably 60 to 65 degrees out today. No wind, and the air is really dry. So once this thing starts to take off, it goes. 
daring get sunburned real easy. That's why he's got his hood up. He's also wearing these special shoes, these flat-soled shoes that slip on right over your boot or your shoulder. So, this is the one that fits up there. second lay down well, it doesn't take long that's why you really got to be on your toes when it's out in the sun I'll have a course coming out guys of you know I'll break it down so you guys that want to learn about this I'll really go into detail about how to do this and how to do it right Also, if, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, guys, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with two to three videos a week about all kinds of concrete stuff, teaching you guys everything we know. We do a lot of stamp concrete. We do concrete slabs, a lot of concrete floors like this, uh, overlays, uh, epoxy floors, everything to do with concrete we do. About the only thing we don't do is concrete walls. You can see that how that floor turned black. We we call that shining out. So we'd say that part shined out. You don't need to hit it again. Now we hook it to the crane. Get it lifted out. And then we saw. Uh, Expansion joint, so you can see the soft cut saw I got right there sitting on the top. I'll have another video about that coming right up. You gotta saw these floors or they'll shrinkage, get shrinkage cracks, especially off those re entered corners. So we'll put four or five saw cuts in this thing. It's all ready for the builders. Well, hey guys, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.